I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagin Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagin. Hello, and here we are at Rama Praise again, and it's going to be a great day today. That's right. I want to ask you a question, honey. What? Who are you? I am the righteousness of God in Christ. That's who that's I am. right. You know, that's who you become when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You become that new creation in Christ. You have a new identity. Yes. God knows who you are, but do you know who you are? So this is one of my favorite subjects to teach on, and it's redemptive realities, who we are in Christ. Yes. The more we can learn about who we are in Christ, it really gives us the revelation of what we have because we're in Christ. Right. And I want to go right now where I am talking about a subject that I love to talk about, and that's who are you? My father used to say that really, until you understand this, nothing else really works. And that is your identity, who you are. You know, in the world we live in today, a lot of people are trying to identify themselves and they identify with various things and groups and so forth. And all of that is constantly changing. Many people, you know, try to find their identity in some, uh, somebody that they admire. <laughs> I, ha I, get a, I used to get a kick. They don't do it too much anymore, but... Uh, People used to, to, to mock my dad. If you don't know who he was, that was Kenneth e. Hagen. And uh, they used to try to be him, and they would could see how far they could get out over the edge of the platform. Anybody ever notice he used to get his feet hanging out? And then he'd do this. I've seen people do that, you know. Even some of them even try to get to sound like him, do, do his voice, you know, do an impersonation. You know, uh, people identify with different things. Some people just identify with their nationality. You know, I'm an American because I'm, Amer I'm from America. Or I'm an Okie because I'm from, from Oklahoma. Some people identify with their past because of their experiences in the past. Some people identify with failure because they've had a failure. You know, some people identify with their surroundings. You know, I was raised in the country, so I'm just a country hick. Others identify with what they do. I'm a fireman, I'm a nurse, I'm a preacher, I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor. You know, and uh, some people identify with the fact that they're dumb because somebody told them as they were growing up, well, you're just dumb, you'll never be anything. And people start identifying with that. You look at me sort of funny, but it's the truth. People start, start identifying with things. A little boy was in a place of business with his parents and he was just a terror. He was messing up everything. So one of the workers finally decided if she, see if she could calm him down before he tore the whole place up. And so she started talking to him and, and she said, now what is your name? The little boy looked at her without hesitation and mine, it said, my name is No Billy. He had been told No Billy so many times, he was identifying himself as No Billy. <laughs> you know, some things it's good to identify with in the natural. And, but if you identify yourself with your vocation, that changes when, you, when you're no longer in that vocation or retire. If you identify with past experiences, that changes. If you identify with what people say about you, uh, 
then you can have contradictory statements about you. Now you got to choose which one you want to identify with. The only real constant identification is found in the Word of God. It never changes. What the Bible says you were yesterday, you are today, and you'll be tomorrow. You know, too many people have an identity crisis because something has changed in their life. You know, there was a guy by the name of Gideon, and he let his family tree identify him. Look, to, look in Judges 6, Judges chapter 6. This is one of my favorite, one of my favorite things to teach on is identification, who you are according to the Word of God. Now, if you look at this, I'm going to read this from the NLT. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash and the clan of Abenezer. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites? Then the, Lord turn, then the Lord turned to him and said, Go with strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I'm sending you. But Lord, the Gideon replied, How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in, in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I'm the least in my entire family. The Lord said to him, I'll be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as you are, as you are fighting against one man. The angel here found Gideon and he was hiding, threshing wheat. You know, Israel had disobeyed God and he had allowed the Midianites to come in and take over and now they destroyed the crops and they had stripped the land and if they found anybody that had any, any food, they would take it away from them. And it looked like God had abandoned them, but, but God was working. Even when... They couldn't see it. You know, we sing a song, he's working when you can't see it. I don't know, I forgot what the words are, but you, I see some of you shaking your head. You know, he was looking for somebody to lead Israel to victory over their enemies. And he came to Gideon and he said, mighty hero. He saw Gideon for what he could be and not what Gideon saw himself as. He saw himself as the least and the weakest. and But God identified him differently. You know, often people see themselves according to the things around us, but God sees us according to what the Word of God says about us. You know, you can identify yourself by saying, well... I, I, I'm the child of so-and-so who was the child of so-and-so who was the child of so-and-so who was the child of so-and-so and that sounds just like the Bible, doesn't it? You know, the son of so-and-so, the son of so-and-so. Uh, and that can either be discouraging or encouraging. And that may be your natural identity, right? I mean, I am the son of Kenneth Hagin. He was the son of... Uh, Jess Hagen, and you just go on back down the line of lineage. And on my grandmother's side, her name was Drake, and they they have traced their lineage all the way back to Sir Francis Drake. So I, I Sir Francis Drake is in my in my lineage. But what what does you know what does that mean? It really doesn't mean anything because your spiritual identity is the most important thing, not your natural identity, your spiritual identity, who you are in Christ. Now, let's, let's let the Word of God speak to us. Go to Genesis 17, 1 through 5. Genesis 17, 1 through 5. 
And when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I'm El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithful night and live a blameless life. I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee you countless descendants. At that time, Abram, Abram fell on his face on the ground. And then God said, this is my covenant you. I will make you a father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I'm changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham, for you will be the father of many nations. Now, see, Abraham, Abram had a name change. God identified him differently. He identified him with his name so that he could see who he really was. You know, we, we need to look into the Word of God and consistently believe what the Word of God says to us about who we are. You know, that's when you understand who you are according to the Word of God, the way God sees you, you can be steadfast and no matter how much pressure is put on you, you can stand steady. You can be unmovable when the challenges come. And all of us will face challenges. We all face challenges, many different. Actually, when you understand who you really are, according to what God has said about you, it helps it's easier to resist the attacks of the enemy. You know, we need to realize how many people were changed their name and it get given a new identity in the Bible. Jacob was changed from Jacob to Israel. Gideon was given an identity from being a, somebody, a nobody to a somebody. Simon was given the name Peter. You know, what God says that you are is important. Now, a lot of people are saying, Oh, I wish God would appear to me supernaturally like he did to people in the Bible and tell me who I am. Hey, he has come to you. He has told you who you are right here in the Word of God. Your spiritual identity is who you are in Christ. You know, some people go around trying to be somebody talking about what they used to be, what they want to be, what they would like to be. You need to learn who you are and say who you are. The most important thing is that we need to realize this one powerful verse, we all know it, we quote it all the time. I'm, I'm not telling most of you something you don't know, but you need to be reminded of this so that you would do it more regularly. Peter said when in his writings he said as long as I'm alive I'm going to and I'm paraphrasing that modern day language but he said as long as I'm alive I'm going to keep reminding you of all of these things and that's what I'm going to do 2 Corinthians five seventeen, we all know it this, uh, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person the old life is gone the new life has begun that's the NLT the Wade translation says so if anyone becomes united in Christ he is a fresh creation. The original conditions have passed away. They have been replaced by new conditions. Another translation says, when someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He's not the same anymore. A new life has begun. All of this happens when you are born again and, and become in Christ. This shows us a lot of things in this verse. Actually, in the New Testament, there's around 134 verses that tell us about who we are in Christ, whom, and, and actually, there's a little book out there written by a fellow by the name of Kennedy Hagen. It's called In Him. Anybody ever read it, In Him? It's a good little book. If you don't have it, you need to get it. You need to read it about once every two or three months. It reminds you. I'm not talking about who 
we wish we are. I'm not talking about who we're trying to be. I'm talking about who we are right now. Ephesians 2, 4 through 7 gives us a little better understanding. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which he lo loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up together and made to set together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is, in the age to come, he might show the exceeding richness of his grace, of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Now, in these, these verses right here, Paul identifies us how God sees us. He sees us being made alive in Christ. He sees us being raised up with Christ. He sees us being seated with Christ. You see, we need to learn to see ourselves the way God sees us after we've been born again. This is the way God looks at us. You, you need to quit looking at yourself the way you are and start looking at yourself the way God says he looks at you from the word of God. Not what somebody said, not what this guy said or that guy said. What does the Bible, what the Bible says about you? You know, when we get a hold of this, really get a hold of this revelation, I mean, it will make us stronger in every area of our Christian life. We'll understand our authority as a believer. In fact, my dad used to say, you really can't understand yourself, the authority of a believer, until you understand who you are in Christ. You know, so many times everybody's wanting to get a new revelation. Hey, we got the revelation right here. Let's look at it, learn it, and live it. You know, everybody want to come up with something new. Hey, if God said it, he meant what he said, so just get a hold of it and run with it. You know, some people say to me, you know, they say, Oh, man, it's really something that you're the son of, of Kenneth E. Hagin. And I say, yeah, that's my natural identity, and I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of my dad. But I have a greater identity in Christ. I'm a new creation in Christ, a child of God, an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. See, these are the things we need to get a hold of and hang on to. This is what will take, take you through the fire, through the flood and everything else and bring you out on the other side victorious. Everything changes when you start saying, I am. God identified himself to Moses. He said, I am who I am. He said, Tell them that I am sent you. I am is a strong word. They're powerful words. These are the words God used to describe himself. The Pauline revelation, and for you that's just a theological term for the writings of Paul. In the Pauline revelation, he is the one that gives us the revelation of who we are in Christ through his writings. If we are going to overcome adversity, we have to identify ourselves. Now, you remember a story when Paul was taken prisoner and he was uh, there preaching and He's taken prisoner, and they were going to give him a whipping with the whip. And he said something that changed everything. 
He said, I am a Roman citizen. That Roman commander had put Paul in prison without due process of law, which could have cost him his position and even his life. But when he identified himself as I am a Roman citizen, he gave identification, everything changed. Now the ones that were against him are fighting for him because the Jewish people had gotten an uproar, so they just going to quiet it down, so they just arrested him. But now they are saying, okay, okay, and they're turning, they're turning the other way. Why? He didn't pray. He didn't preach him a sermon. He didn't go on a fast. He simply said, I am a Roman citizen. And immediately everything changed. That's why we need to learn how to, when things begin to get bad and things are going bad and the enemy's coming, we need to begin to identify ourselves who we are. I am. Use these, and go get some other scripture, but these, these scriptures. I am. One we need to use is, I have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind because of who I am in Christ. See, you know, if you, when we get into adversity, we can say, I'm more than a conqueror. Not just a conqueror, I'm more. More. That means that you way out in front more when you more you're more than something you didn't just conquer you're more than that you know in defeat and failure you can say and we've been singing about it I am a victor in Christ Jesus Paul says that he always we always triumph in Christ Jesus I'm a victor. I always triumph in Christ Jesus. I always triumph in Christ Jesus. See, it's important that we learn to use that word, I am, according to the word of God, not according to what you think or what somebody told you. I want you to realize when you really understand who you are in Christ, yes. it changes everything. So I, I, I want you to get a hold of those in him scriptures and, and it and tells you who you are in Christ. That's right. And honey, I say also, you know, the enemy will just try to tell you negative things about yourself. Right. And when he does, you just start telling him who you are in Christ and he'll leave you alone. You know what? We have a special offer, new releases. Yes. My uh, four CDs, the God's, uh, Man's Impossibility, God's, God's possibility, possibility, and Dad's Hold Fast to the Word for a gift of $25 or more. But you know what? I'm going to do something. Everybody that orders these two CD packets, I am going to give you a little mini book called In Him. A, that's for everybody that calls in and, and orders these two, yes. these two CDs. That's There's right. four CDs here and uh, two, two CDs, CDs in here. That's six CDs for a gift of $25 or more. And I'm going to give you a little mini book that we have called In Him. It's got all the scriptures telling you who you are in Christ. That's for this broadcast only. All right. For this broadcast only. So make sure if you want to get that little book that you go and get these. It's an awesome book. It is and awesome. It's something that you actually need to read every day. Yeah, it has, it, it already has, uh, I don't know how many of the scriptures already written out for you yes, on telling you who you are in Christ. Well, honey, this week, guess what's happening? 
Call to Arms Men's Conference. Oh, really? It is. Man. You know, we had a wonderful Kindle the Flame Ladies yeah, Conference. Yeah, I know. You had, you, had, you had a lot of ladies, we too. We had a lot of ladies. Uh, yes, we and, did. And I want to encourage all you guys to get here. It's going to be a great, great time. Of course, I will speak on Thursday night and then all day Friday. Uh -huh. uh, and my, my son-in-law, Don Burns, is going to talk about... Uh, about business. Yes. He, he has done, he's a great entrepreneur mm -hmm. and yeah. he's done a lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, and then Josh Pennington is kind of talking. Darren Baldwin is going to be doing a session and we have a special session with a young man that traveled with us uh, at, around uh, out on the road, but yes. now he is a youth minister mm -hmm. in North Carolina. He is going to do a breakout session for the young, young adults, adults and the young people mm -hmm. and young young men. Uh -huh. It's going to be fabulous. You're going to want to be here. So, hey, go right now to rhema.org slash CTA and you can register. That's right. That's right. And ladies, you know, your husbands sometimes don't do that. So you go and register for them. Just get them here, okay? That's if you right. want to know more information, you can go to rhema.org and find out all the information about it. That's okay? right. Okay. Hey, listen. We do Live in Faith Crusades. Yes. We're starting, our, our, our schedule starts in January. in January. Yes. I've already got that one scheduled. But if you want to know where we're going to be throughout the year, just go visit rhema.org and, and you can see our upcoming itinerary mm -hmm. and where we're going to be. And and we will, if we're coming into your area, we yes. want you to come in, out and see us. And, That's right. And tell us, hey, I, I'm a partner. I watch the television broadcast because we like to talk to those we people. Do. We, we like do. to talk to those people. Yes. Well, I want to thank all of you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. If you're going to receive, you have to build up your level of faith. If your faith is not at the level where you can turn impossibilities into possibilities, you need to exercise it and build it up. Man's impossibility, God's possibility. Four newly released CDs by Kenneth W. Hagen. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Amen. Somebody said, I tried that and it didn't work. Notice what it said. It said you'd have what you say. You said it didn't work, so it didn't work. Hold fast that which thou hast. Hold fast to the word. Two newly released CDs of Kenneth E. Hagen. Cling to what the Holy Spirit has said to you. All six newly released CDs can be yours today for a gift of $25 or more. So call toll free right now, 888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime, day or night to order at rhema.org. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.